Hi, Dennis here. Welcome to Time Trip. And today we'll talk about one of the most controversial people in Chinese history, the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. You have probably heard about the first emperor because of the terracotta warriors, but the terracotta warriors are not the whole thing. They're part of a gigantic necropolis, which includes a tomb as big as an Egyptian pyramid, as well as many smaller tombs with hundreds of skeletons of humans and horses. And there are also bronze chariots and a lot of other things. According to the records of the Grand historian, inside the tomb there is a model of the entire empire with mountains and rivers made of mercury. On the ceiling there is a map of the sky showing the stars and there are also crossbow traps to kill anyone who might try to enter. Scientists have discovered a high concentration of mercury in the soil, which they see as a confirmation of this description. Geophysical analysis has also revealed that there is an underground wall protecting the inner chamber of the tomb from water. However, as long as a tomb remains unexcavated, most of what we know about the first emperor comes from a single source, the records of the Grand Historian which I just mentioned and which was written during the Han Dynasty by historian Sima Qian. Because he happened to be on the wrong side in one of the many power struggles at court, Sima Qian was sentenced to death and he could only avoid this punishment by paying a huge sum of money or by castration. Sima Qian didn't have a lot of money and he didn't want to die because he wanted to complete his monumental history. So to be clear, the reason why you're watching this video is because 2000 years ago one dude in China got his genitals cut off. Fortunately, we in civilized Europe never had the punishment of castration. What's that? We did? Sima Qian describes Qin Shi Huang as a tyrant who after conquering all of China reshaped the political system so that he and only he would be in power. Unlike the previous Zhou dynasty, he refused to adopt feudalism since feudalism meant sharing some power with members of his lineage and instead created a bureaucracy which was safer because bureaucrats were replaceable and owed their status only to the emperor. This reform was probably inspired by philosopher Han Fei who believed that government institutions shouldn't imitate the past but should be flexible and that the state should be governed by impersonal law. These ideas might sound very modern and progressive unless you consider that power was concentrated in the hands of the emperor and that the emperor could change the law whenever he wanted. As a legalist philosopher, Han Fei also believed that people should be controlled by harsh punishments. And the emperor agreed with that very much. But even after these reforms, the first emperor remained suspicious and preferred to do all the governing by himself, working himself every day through huge piles of documents which he didn't trust to anybody else. The first emperor saw himself as the unifier of China and the founder of a new dynasty that would rule forever. After 15 years it fell apart. But even though the Qin Empire collapsed very soon, it was significant because it was the first time China was unified as an empire and over the course of history it would be, in various forms, reunited again and again. So who was the first emperor? Some see him as an evil tyrant who brought about the quick collapse of his own dynasty by his own cruelty and egocentrism. This point of view was popular among scholars of the Han dynasty. They criticized the first emperor for having dismissed Confucian values and accepted legalist philosophy. He is often described as inhuman and cruel. Once somebody had written on a stone that the empire would collapse, when the stone was found, the emperor ordered to execute anyone who lived in that area. The first emperor is also said to have become increasingly cuckoo towards the end of his life when he started persecuting scholars by burying them alive and burning their books. And he said to have taken medicine which was supposed to prolong his life, which it didn't because it contained mercury, so he actually died from it. And when the tomb was finished, the artists and craftsmen who had created the we don't really know what's inside were buried alive inside the tomb so that they wouldn't be able to tell the secret. However, some of these horror stories do not quite fit to the rest of the text of the records of the great historian and might have been fabricated later. And while laws of the Qin dynasty were pretty harsh, laws of the following Han dynasty weren't very nice either. So this was kind of normal at that time. However, what is clear is that by conquering all of China, the first emperor created many enemies and there are many stories about assassination attempts on him, as well as some cool movies about it. This might have contributed to him becoming paranoid towards the end of his life. And when you are paranoid that the people around you are enemies who want to kill you, 
well, burying a few of them alive might help. And when there just happen to be some scholars around criticizing you, well, why not them? But did these things actually happen? We'll probably find out more about the first emperor when the tomb will be eventually excavated. And if this happens during my lifetime, you'll get a very interesting episode. Another way to see him, which is pretty common in China today, is that he, being the one to unify China, was sort of a founder of China, a sort of hero who brought an end the bloody period of the warring states. But was it really the first emperor himself who has unified China? First of all, the Kingdom of Qin had a good geographic location. It was located in the most western part of the warring states, where it was protected by mountains and the Yellow River, and it had existed like this for hundreds of years before the first emperor. Also, the political structure of a powerful militaristic state had already been created by the reforms of minister Shangyang, who like Han Fei was a philosopher of the school of legalism, which favored authoritarian rule by harsh punishments. Which is not a good thing if you're like a normal person living a normal life, but if you're a state waging war, that's pretty effective. So by the time the first emperor came to power, the Qin state probably already was the most powerful one. After he had conquered China, he expanded the empire further and built a part of the Great Wall to protect its borders. I mean, of course he didn't build it himself. He sent prisoners and laborers to do the job, and many of them died, so yeah. Also, he built an extensive network of roads, and he unified measurements, units and weights, which was really important for the emperor to function and to be integrated. But maybe the most important thing was that under his rule, his minister Li Su did a reform that began to unify the writing system. During the 500 years long period of disunion, in different areas in China a different script had developed. And if the script hadn't been unified, these areas would have maintained these writing systems. And in this case, China might have remained permanently divided into separate countries like Europe did after the fall of Rome. Also, the bureaucracy he established, unlike the bureaucracy of the Zhou dynasty, was meritocratic instead of hereditary, and it became the basis of the government of the Han dynasty. And while his dynasty lasted only 15 years, the unified script, the legal system, the bureaucracy, the institutions, and most importantly, the concept of China as an empire, all this survived long after the first emperor. But on the other hand, it's clear that to do this, he committed atrocities. And while some of these horror stories might have been exaggerated, I cannot help feeling that maybe he wasn't a very nice guy. Also, there is the question of whether or not China would have been unified without him. Was he simply following a historically determined path that the situation between the warring states and the reforms of Shangyang had laid out? Or was there something about the first emperor himself that allowed him to change the trajectory of China's history? And was the unification of China by a legalist government actually a good thing? Or did it also lay the foundation for future authoritarian rule? Uh, these aren't easy questions and we don't have definite answers. So tell us what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel. And you can also help us make more videos by supporting us on the crowdfunding website Patreon. We are a small team of college students, so your support will really make a difference. Thank you for watching Time Trip and I hope to see you again.